A lot of us, such as myself, use my mountain bike as my, predominantly, my everyday vehicle. But can we ramp up the fun factor if we had some storage available? You wouldn't expect to use a single-seated Formula One or racing car as your everyday vehicle, so why do we expect the same of our mountain bikes? So today we're going to look at some of the ways we can have fun and explore on our mountain bikes with the advent of more and more options for our frame bags. As we all know, there is a huge amount of variety of things available to us in terms of storage solutions and on-bike tools that might fit in various locations around the bike. Here at GMBN, we are lucky enough to be supported by Topeak. One of the great things about having bags on your bike is those minimalist tools are suddenly not so required. And unshackled by the constraints of space, you can actually take some proper sized, real thorough toolage. So it should mean no matter the problem on the trail, you can always get home. Sometimes you get struck by those mid-ride hunger pangs and it's nice to be able to pack something nice and substantial. Just the bare essentials covered here today, naturally, but you probably could take it to quite an extreme place with the amount of storage available. You could say we have the situation on lockdown. <laughs> so some countries work in inches, others work in the metric system. It's a little known fact that in continental Europe, a lot of places still rely on the baguette unit of measurement. And as you can see, Topeak designed this handlebar bag with that in mind. It comes in at one baguette in its length. Perfect for the demands of our carb loading mountain biking. Right, let's take some measurements. So that's how tall I am. Uh, duh, three and a third, so that's how tall I am. Now, let's go measure some jumps. I turned into, I turned into Sean Connery. Let's go measure some jumps. One, two, three, four. Four baguettes. In another system that's used, so metric, I'm 183 centimeters. Some of you might be familiar with that. So 183 is three and a third baguettes. That's your conversion rate. So you can kind of work that out. Ooh. Now, if I was going bikepacking for overnight or multi-day trips, then I would realistically be reaching for a three bag setup just like this one. You might have seen Neil and Blake run something similar. I think for my everyday riding, the piece that really captures my imagination is a frame bag. As long as it clears your linkage on your full suspension bike, you're away to go and you've suddenly got so much storage, it clears both your legs for pedaling and it just gives you more options and versatility. What's not to love? Bloody hell. Oh my God, that is greasy. Bloody hell's teeth. So when we're choosing how to carry our equipment, a lot of people are thinking, well, I already have a backpack. And backpacks definitely do have their place. And whether you go for a backpack or a frame bag, well, that's a really personal choice. I think the advantages of having kit carried upon the bike is there's no weight up high. It's not gonna get that kind of sweat patches of, uh, of doom and uh, yeah, kind of just set and forget and you don't have to worry about it. So if all the advantages of having a frame bags are so clear, why aren't they more common? Well, I think the elephant in the room is the slightly unconventional looks. But if you get one that fits your frame well, so think of size and how it's mounted, I think actually it looks all right. And like I said, everything is stored on there good to go. And you don't have to worry about any weight on your person and it reduces the risk of falling on something such as a big old pump in your backpack. So you're in the market for some frame bags. What kind of things do you look for? As we mentioned previously, compatibility and size are definitely a factor, but also it's worth looking at things like if they're waterproof or not. If you've got a nice jacket stored in the frame bag, but then it's soaking wet by the time you get to it, it might not be that much use to you. Also, it's worth noting how much rear wheel travel you have and how low you run your saddle. Maybe if you're riding steep technical terrain, then a saddlebag isn't the one to go for and you should stick to your frame or handlebar bag. Oh. 
Oh my God. So I've got my sleeping equipment. I've got a nice big warm jacket and I'm ready to turn in for the evening. I also have quite the feast planned. Now, how do you think Loic Bruni got so strong? Well, it was the staple French diet of baguette and merlot, of course. And rumor has it that Mathieu van der Poel wouldn't dream of hitting the start line without a few homebrew Heinekens to give him some of that famous Dutch courage. And for dessert, of course, the fan favorite, well, at least my favorite, some Oreos. Now, realistically talking, this might not be the food that we would normally expect to eat on our bike rides, but here's an interesting topic to explore. A lot of the food we do eat is space conscious. It's made to be small and compact, such as your energy gels or energy bars. With a frame bag, you're not held by those same limitations. So it kind of opens up possibilities to be self-sufficient on bigger rides. Now, obviously this has been quite a light hearted video, but I do hope I've been reasonably informative about some of the choices we have to make when choosing our frame bags. Now, if you want to stick with bike packing, click down here to see Blake and Neil on a multi-day adventure and click down here to see the best ways to store equipment and tools on your bike. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. I hope the bed bugs don't bite.